Hello and welcome to Tank and AFE News. My name's Tom and today we are looking at T-34, an illustrated history of Stalin's greatest tank. Uh, this one's by a author named Wolfgang Fleischer, who is, um, this is, was originally published in Germany uh, two years ago, 2018. In German, of course, it has since been translated and published in English by Green Hill Books. This is, of course, a hardcover, as you can see. It is... Thirty-four ninety-five in the United States, or nineteen ninety-nine uh, pounds in the UK. So, just looking over it here, it just says uh, two hundred and seventy-five images, including rare archive photographs and photographs of ex uh, surviving examples. This is, I would say, primarily developmental history. It is not a combat history. It doesn't include stories from individual soldiers or anything like that or really talk about the major battles that the t-34 is used at this really is looking at the technical specifics of the tank and how those changed over time and the different prototypes that were introduced um, and improvements that were made that kind of thing so if you're looking for a developmental history and like i said it's 200 some pages uh primarily it's like i said a lot of images charts and photos but a decent amount of text um, but, you know, I was sort of surprised. I, I Pretty much, I think I sat down and read this in one setting. Um, so it is not um, a particularly long read. Um, it reads pretty well, particularly for a book that's... So sometimes when books are translated from another language, they're not exactly... Um, uh, sometimes the translations can be not, not the easiest reading, but this one seemed to be fine, so no problems there. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, obviously, there's been a fair amount written about the T-34 over the years. Probably not as much as some of the U.S. tanks, like the Sherman, or even some of the German stuff, uh, just because those are sort of the most popular in the English-speaking market. But the last few years has seen an increase in things written on the T-34, so that is nice. Uh, we start with the forward by Anthony Tucker Jones, who... Sort of just sort of gives a brief summary of the the T thirty four history, and he's he's done a ton of the uh, images of war series books, uh, so sort of making a name for himself with those. Introduction and then the place of the T thirty four in tank history. So sort of talking about uh, the the impact of the T thirty four on the battlefield in, in nineteen forty one when the Germans first encountered it. Probably a story a lot of people are familiar with. I, I love this picture here of a. Of a German 37 millimeter gun that's just been flattened, as run over by uh, a T-34 or some other tank, most likely. Because, um, of course, the T-34 was a big shock when it came out, uh, or when the Germans first encountered it, because of its firepower and armor, and, and mobility for that matter. Um, certainly one of the best tanks in the world in the first half of the war. And as you can see, here's a picture of sort of Christie's suspension. Uh, so like I said, this really talks about the technical aspects of the vehicle more so than uh, how it was used or where or when and that kind of thing. Here, sort of result of theft or intellectual property and plagiarism. So talking about how much of an influence um, the work of Walter Christie was on the tank and how much was actually sort of the Soviet uh, designers taking that and running with it, introducing their own ideas. Um, so here we see pictures of, of the Christie tanks. Uh, and of course, you know, it, it, that's one of those things that I think always gets sort of exaggerated in Western sources when they talk. Uh, y usually the common sort of framing is that, you know, if only the United States had listened to Walter Christie, you know, here's this American making amazing tanks, and we rejected them, but the Soviets, you know, adopted his designs, and, you know, the T-34 was the result. Well... The, the, the T-34 is a pretty big step from the BT series, which, yes, the BT series is directly related to the Christie designs, but there's a whole lot of other innovation and work that comes from Soviet designers to get from the BT to the T-34, that it's not just them doing little tweaks and improvements on the work of Walter Christie. So we should put that aside. I don't think that's a narrative that, you know, like I said, a lot of older books use it. I'm, I'm not a fan of it, but, you know, the T-34 is, it's it's a Soviet tank. Um, uh, and they should be given the due credit for that. So here we get into development of some of the vehicles leading up to the T-34. Um, you can see there's a lot of drawings in this book. Like you can see, here's the 
the difference between the L11 and the uh, F34 guns. Uh, but so we'll sort of flip through here and you can sort of get an idea of what to expect. So here's a diagram of the suspension and mechanical components, uh, transmission and whatnot. Lots of these sort of line drawings, uh, most of these are by Robert Jerga. So it doesn't give a scale for these drawings though, so that's unfortunate. So for model makers, um, it's always nice to have scale markings. And this part's a little more text heavy in this development part earlier in the book. Um, as you'll see as we get later into the book, it's more the, the, the photos and drawings become even a little more prominent. Uh, skip ahead a little bit. And then, you know, discussion of things like the A34, so some of the proposed improved versions that, of course, didn't happen because as after the war broke out, of course, all, all attention as far as changing the design, the only things that they're really the Soviets are interested in is designs that make the vehicle easier to produce because it's just a matter of we're not trying to optimize this tank um, in terms of combat performance, we're trying to optimize it in terms of production because we just need more and more numbers of tanks out there. Uh, you know, whatever flaws the tank has, we can live with as long as we just have enough because it, it really is a numbers game throughout a lot of the war. Here we can see some of the photo sections, which, like I said, the photos are quite extensive. You know, the, the paper of this book is sort of standard paper. It's not the glossy paper that makes really crisp photo reproductions. Um, you know, that said, the, the photo reproduction quality seems decent. Again, and I, I say this every review, you know, usually the limitations is more to do with the, the, the quality or lack of quality of the original photos um, rather than the, the reproduction of the book itself. But you can see, sort of, for a lot of the book, it is quite a bit of diagrams and pictures. Um, so that maybe surprised me a little bit, particularly the, uh, in a book of this sort of size and format, you expect a little more text. But the good thing is it makes it fairly easy, a fairly easy quick read. And he does manage to hit all the sort of important salient points um, in the text that's in here. Uh, in the middle section here, they do have, so you do get some glossy photos in the middle here about well, they're not numbered, but I'm guessing about 10, 12 pages there. And then back into the development. So here we have a nice chart on the performance of the different guns. More information on some of the proposed sort of variants and prototypes that never happened, like the artillery tank versions on that last page. And another photo section sort of highlighting tracks and running gear. Because, of course, the road wheel designs changed as supply of rubber became an issue. Um, information on engines. So, you know, like I said, this should give people a pretty good idea what to expect. Here we get into, so we got the T T-43, which is another improved version that, while it never itself went into production, aspects of its design, particularly some of the work on the turret, would be used um, once they introduced the T-3045. So of course here we get into here, so that's sort of the first really major improvement of the vehicle um, while it's in production during the war. Uh, and of course many, many, many T-34-85s would be built. Here we get into the T-44, which of course would be sort of the basis of post-war Soviet tank development. Um, and then by the end of the book here, so the last sections on the self-propelled guns that were based on the T-34 chassis, so the SU-85 and SU-100, um, and others, of course. And that sort of finishes the book off. So we finish here with um, a bunch of different data sheets on the individual models. Uh, not a super amount of depth, but still nice to have them on individual models because if you just go online say and look up t34 on wikipedia it'll give you sort of these same stats but only for the basic um sort of most common version of the tank not these sort of breakdowns of stats for individual specific variants so that's a nice resource to have and that's pretty much the book so um like i said i was sort of surprised i was, I was expecting something that was a little more dense in terms of text but sometimes uh, it's nice to have something that is a little quicker and more succinct um, and well illustrated because obviously tanks are physical items and it's nice to have represent representations um, in terms of photographs and, and diagrams you know because you can only sort of 
get so much information from just words trying to imagine it in your mind without having representations of, of the objects themselves. So, uh, yeah, this one I, I enjoyed. I If you don't have a lot of other resources on the T-34, this is certainly not a bad starting off point. Um, so, again, I thank the people uh, at Casemate Books for providing this review copy, and we will catch you on the next one.